The Plucky Squire is the first game from new independent studio All Possible Futures and is directed by James Turner. Before getting into the review, I think it's important to acknowledge the origin story of this game. Before working on The Plucky Squire, Turner worked at Game Freak, the creators of the mainline Pokemon series. While there, he designed the Ice Cream Pokemon, directed the excellent 3DS game Harmonite, and was even the art director for Pokemon Sword and Shield. The Plucky Squire is his first project since leaving Game Freak, so everyone's expectations of it were pretty high, especially my own. The reception to the Plucky Squire's unveiling on social media has been very positive. I think everyone responded well to seeing James Turner's distinctive art style on display, as well as the game's unique concept of mixing 2D and 3D environments together. So now that it's finally here, how is it? Well, to be honest with you guys, I'm a little bit mixed on this one. I played the Switch version as well, which certainly didn't help. The Switch version in particular is beset by a whole host of performance issues, I'll get into later. But for now, let's just get stuck into the review. The Plucky Squire puts you in the role of Jot. Taking place in the Kingdom of Mojo, Jot and his pals set out to stop an evil wizard from taking it over. However, the premise is not that straightforward. This is actually taking place in a storybook that lives in a ten-year-old's room. The evil wizard Humgrump has found a way to escape the storybook itself and into the real world, so it's up to Jot to do the same. This is both the story and gameplay-based gimmick of the Plucky Squire as the game alternates between the flat, 2D top-down storybook and the open-air 3D bedroom. I'll circle back to the world and presentation of the Plucky Squire, but I think for this review it's important to get straight into the gameplay. The 2D sections play like a 2D Zelda, with simple sword combat, the lack of a meaningful jump, and simple environmental puzzles. The 3D sections play like 3D Mario, I think this is the most intriguing concept for most players, and is certainly unique to the Plucky Squire, but I feel its execution does hamper the game overall. In my opinion, the game works best in the 3D sections, as these were an absolute blast to play. It really felt like some of the best levels of Mario Odyssey, with Jot platforming and taking down enemies, with brief moments that take place on a 2D plane. Jot can also teleport into other 2D surfaces like sketches or trading cards lying about the room. The pace of these sections is fast, and platforming and exploring is genuinely quite fun. Unfortunately, I didn't feel the same way about the 2D storybook sections. There's a bit of whiplash going between the two. The pace of the 2D sections is much, much slower, with a lot of your playtime here eaten up by dialogue and narration scenes. While combat here feels good and the environmental puzzles are fun to solve, the pace is so slow and I found myself just wanting them to be over so I could get back to the 3D areas. And then, there's the mini-games. You're constantly interrupted with mini-game challenges here and there, which sounds fun but didn't really work for me. So here we are already splitting gameplay between 2D Zelda and 3D Mario inspired concepts, but these mini-games also expand the number of genres and gameplay styles on display. It's got inspirations from Punch-Out, Puyo Puyo, Jetpack Joyride, Rhythm Heaven and Star Fox to name a few. There's a lot of different concepts on offer here to the point where it's a bit much. This is a game with a capital G that's been underlined, italicized and bolded. A greatest hits of gaming if you will. It integrates a bunch of great concepts without really nailing just one. I really wish this game had just focused on 3D platforming, which is its strongest element. But you know, this isn't an entirely negative thing. Despite all this, I still had a great time with the Plucky Squire, just for how joyful and creative it is. This is still a $30 game made by a small studio and an auteur director, and if there's one thing that is clear, it's the creative passion Turner and his team brought to the project. The designs of the characters are cute, as are both the 2D and 3D worlds they inhabit. The 2D designs in particular are very unique in Turner's signature style that he uses in his Instagram posts. To my surprise, the Plucky Squire does introduce some other art styles too. It's creative and that's entirely the point. The story itself makes a case for creativity being the one thing that can change the future, as main character Jot is a writer who inspires the boy who owns the storybook to become one too. Additionally, supporting character Violet is a painter, another supporting character Thrash is a musician. So you have creative environments, characters who weaponize their creativity, and gameplay and music that jumps around between different genres video games are capable 
capable of. Therefore, on a thematic level, Plucky Squire is a game I can really get behind. In this world dominated by soulless online shooters and with the incoming invasion of AI-generated slop, the Plucky Squire is truly a light in the darkness. Exploding with colour and enthusiasm, despite its gameplay shortcomings, the sense of joy just emanating from this game is plain infectious. Nobody who plays this game will come away hating it, and everybody will come away with it with something they loved. Or will they? I don't know if this game is going to find much of an audience. Perhaps it looks too cute for older gamers, and younger gamers might be turned off by the slow pace of the 2D sections. I think this would make for a great intergenerational title, good for parents to play with their kids in chunks. I'm sure it will get a cult following among the so-called cozy gamers too. Anyway, I'll still recommend it to anyone wanting to try something a bit different. It's not too long, only taking me about 10 hours, so you're not going to have to take much time out of your gaming schedule for this one. And finally, as a warning, do not, I repeat, do not buy this game for the Switch. I really regret buying the Switch version, as the performance on this is worse than Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, especially in the 3D sections. I'm not much of a frame rate person, and I can look at frame rate dips in something like Tears of the Kingdom and still enjoy it, but the frame rate dips in Plucky Squire are just unbearable. I swear it runs at a very inconsistent like 25 frames per second during the platforming sections which is not only distracting, but actually makes it hard to play. Additionally, resolution, lighting, and textures are struggling to keep up here. You get blurry backgrounds, sawtooth edges, and textures popping in absolutely everywhere. And not only that, there's a lot of bugs. It crashed a few times here and there, and some weird things happened like areas refusing to load, or key items getting trapped in closed off areas, or invisible barriers appearing. These forced me to close and reopen the game several times. A colourful game like this should be right at home on the Switch, so it's disappointing it wasn't optimised for it. I only got it on the Switch so I could take it to work, and I regret not getting it on the PS5. I've watched some comparison videos and it looks like it runs great on other platforms, so get it on one of those if you can. Perhaps it'll run better on the inevitable Switch too. To conclude, The Plucky Squire is a fun little indie game that celebrates the joy and creativity possible in the gaming medium. While I appreciate that it's a short and sweet little escape between bigger games and a crowded gaming landscape, and it does offer gamers something a bit different, I was ultimately disappointed by its inconsistent pace and whiplash between gameplay styles. Being hampered by performance issues on the Switch didn't help its case either. However, I still don't regret buying it. Whatever gripes I have aside, The Plucky Squire is still a rock-solid debut from a new independent studio. I can foresee great things for all possible futures in the future, I just hope their next title focuses in on and hones one excellent idea, and doesn't just clash different gameplay concepts together again. I still recommend giving The Plucky Squire a shot, there's plenty to enjoy here. So guys, thanks as always for watching. Please let me know down below your thoughts on the Plucky Squire. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. I'll be back in a couple of weeks with a review of The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. Looking forward to that one. So take it easy and I'll see you next time.